Hi guys, Virtus uh, Education here with yet another video, actually a whole new series, and this series is actually going to be covering Unreal Development Kit, and keep in mind I'm going to split this into two parts, first and foremost I am going to have a beginner series which is just going to be the, the beginner concepts of game development, and uh, in the advanced series I'm going to go into things like programming, scripting, and all that other cool stuff, so Let's begin. In this series, I'm going to be heading up my series of game development series, uh, starting with Unreal Development Kit, in which I'll be teaching you how to make your very own game from the ground up with no prerequisites or pre-knowledge. I've personally been doing game development for three to four years and been in the industry professionally for two years, and I'm currently working on an upcoming FPS title. Having said that, I would like to pass that knowledge on and give everyone a chance of a career in the game development industry too. Keep in mind UDK isn't the only software required to make video games. Having said that, I will be producing additional tutorial series to accompany this such as 3D modeling and animation packages and more alongside additional game engines such as uh, CryEngine or uh, maybe even Unity if I'm really going to stretch it and 3D modeling packages will be things like uh, uh, 3ds Max or Maya, etc. So in the beginner series, I'm going to be going over all the different aspects of Unreal Development Kit, uh, with a strong focus on level design. Keep in mind there will be an advanced series which will include programming set of development in Unreal Development Kit using Un Unreal Script and all that cool super advanced sweet stuff that brings everything together. So I'm just going to quickly go over the different topics which I have uh, laid out for you. Uh, first and foremost, I'll be doing a series introduction, well, I am doing a series introduction, sorry, in which I just outline the series, I introduce it, and so on and so forth. My next video will be going over downloading and installing the Unreal Development Kit SDK, uh, and that will be showing off uh, where to download it from, some of the different features while we download it, and more. And then I'm going to go on to... Uh, actually opening up the engine itself, the uh, SDK, and actually explaining the user interface ranging from the direct environment to matinee to kismet to the content browser and so on and so forth, getting you familiar with the environment ready for the upcoming uh, tutorials. And then the next video is going to be somewhat unorthodox in the sense that I won't actually be using the engine at all in this video. This uh, specific topic will be going over the concept of level design because quite frankly uh, you can't actually just go into a game engine and make a level with no planning at all so I'm essentially going to be showing you how to plan your levels before we move into anything in this video uh, inside of Photoshop or whatever 2D um, software package you, you choose to use. I'll also be providing a template which I created previously for you to work around and I generally feel that template makes things more efficient, professional looking and so on. So. After we've got our plan, I'm going to be moving on to BSP brushes and blocking. This will essentially be making a primitive version of your level that you previously uh, just uh, created in your planning. So this previous, uh, sorry, this primitive version of the level can be built around, uh, can have things built around it. For example, all the different models, the animations, etc., will be built around this very primitive white box, as we like to call it. I'll then go on to uh, explaining how to create terrain. So this will be things, for example, let's say you're in a lovely uh, hilly environment. I'll show you how to make the hills. I'll show you all the different tools associated with the terrain editor and generally get you familiar with uh, the terrain editor environment so you can create sexy terrains around your game. I'll also then move on to preliminary material usage, which is essentially uh, using pre-made materials. Uh, you can also use ones you've already created, but at this point you shouldn't have already done so. So I'll essentially show you how to find a material, a pre-made one, and then apply it to an object. Uh, those two objects will be, first and foremost, the terrain. I'll show you how to paint, uh, paint on those materials to the terrain. And then I'll also show you how to apply these materials to BSP and um, uh, any static meshes that you may have. I'll then move on to scene lighting, which is essentially adding lights uh, to your area. I'm going to go through all the different types of lights, for example, uh, skylights, point lights, dominant uh, lights, and uh, the different types of those lights, for example, to uh, dynamic, toggleable, and so on and so forth. I'm also going to be showing you how to make your scene nice and pretty, highlighting different areas, and... Uh, 
some of the different lighting effects such as light shafts which are quite frankly uh, sexy and there is no other way to describe it. I'll be then moving on to static meshes. This will essentially be uh, bringing in pre-made static meshes to your scene. These are essentially uh, objects so any pre-made ones in the content browser I'll be showing you how to bring into your scene and actually make use of. And in the next video I'll also be going into importing your own custom static meshes from a 3D uh, package which you've already created. I will be creating a series to accompany this, uh, showing you how to use uh, 3ds Max so you'll actually be able to create your models and then bring them into UDK in this one video. I'll then go on to fractured static meshes which are essentially a different type of static mesh. Uh, these specific ones are dynamic and actually can be uh, destroyed so if you shoot it it will break into numerous pieces as the developer sets out. I will then go on to a somewhat more dynamic uh, type of static mesh which is known as KA actors. So let's say you shoot it, it will move about. See so if you shoot it, it's going to fly across the map. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you the option to create the velocity, the mass, etc. on the uh, actual object itself. So you can get nice lovely objects which are dynamic and uh, the, the player can actually interact with. I'll then move out of the sort of mesh place and actually start making materials which are essentially the different colors on your uh, object. So I'm going to be starting off with basic material creation which is essentially diffuse which is just uh, the basic colors. I'll then move on to specular material creation which will be advancing on what we've already learnt and we'll be showing you how to make the lovely reflection, uh, the light uh, bouncing and reflection so it actually looks somewhat uh, realistic and somewhat sci-fi at the same time. I'll also show you how to uh, add normal materials. Uh, normal isn't in the sense that it's just generic and universal, it's more in the sense that uh, normal as a texture map, the texture map which actually allows you to create uh, texture defined depth in an object. And lastly, I'll also go over emissive material creation, which will actually allow you to create materials which emit light, like a computer screen that will emit light in a specific color on the texture. And also I'm going to lastly, out of the materials pieces, I will be showing you how to uh, animate your materials. This will be either uh, actually and materials that animate inside of the material editor, such as text panning or color panning, or objects which actually have materials that switch based on the time or some other kind of uh, element. So for example it's going to change from blue to red uh, materials based on some sort of trigger or input or something along those lines. So after that I'll also show you how to create water, uh, this is the basic topic and I'll essentially be, uh, be showing you how to create volumes. For water so you actually float around, this volume is pre-made so there's no really complex stuff. I'll also show you how to uh, place a dynamic fluid actor in the scene so you actually have a plane that will adapt and manipulate itself based on uh, some sort of uh, input. For example, if you shoot it, they'll get it. There'll be a ripple effect. And I'll also show you how to apply a material to that so it looks realistic and, quite frankly, sexy. Along with a post-processing effect to top it off, a nice, lovely depth of field post-processing effect. So. On the topic of volumes, I'll be showing off some of the main different volumes you have inside of UDK, ranging from ladder volumes, to gravity volumes, to trigger volumes, etc. I'm just going to be going through the big, big list of volumes that we actually have. And then I'm also going to go on to post-processing. Uh, you can usually do post-processing two, way, two ways in the form of a volume or global settings. I'm going to be showing you how to do it with both of those and kind of give yourself a sort of color grading experience to your level because that's essentially what post-processing is. It's color grading, but you can also add other kind of effects onto it. For example, um, things like uh, depth of field, bloom, and all that. So... I'm then going to move on to prefabs. I'm not really going to explain these too much other than these are preset sets of objects. I'm then going to go on to primitive artificial intelligence. This is essentially going to be AI in its very basic of form. So you'll be able to place one down, you'll be able to set up a nav mesh, you'll be able to set up uh, path nodes and so on. I'll then go on to showing you how to use the foliage mode which is another kind of editor uh, editing mode which UDK has provided which allow you to uh, essentially 
place down loads and loads of objects at once as if it is uh, foliage. Uh, I'll actually be working with foliage itself at the time, so we have to place down loads and loads of grass or loads of trees with variation and all that cool stuff. I'm also going to next uh, show you how to add an extra level of um, atmosphere to your level in this form of sounds. Um, I'm going to show you how to import your own custom sounds alongside using some of the preset ones, drag them into 3D space, go over some of the different settings and uh, kind of go over the different types of sounds that you actually have available to you. I'm then going to go over decals which are essentially projected textures. I'm then going to introduce you to Kismet, which is uh, Unreal Engine's visual scripting interface. This has a lot of power to it. It allows us to do a bunch of stuff. It allows us to, um, you know, do programming work without the uh, physical programming side, where you actually have to type in code. This is all going to be dragging and dropping elements, hooking them up, and putting them in sequence, and so on and so forth. And this is really exciting. We're going to show you how to do a whole bunch of stuff, like setting off... Um, sequences for example I'm gonna show you how to make a door that opens when you stand in front of it like a sort of automatic door just to show you uh, the power of kismet with no programming whatsoever I'm also then gonna go into matinee for cinematics which is essentially going to be uh, creating a camera actor tying the character's view to it and then moving that camera actor around on a set track I'm also then going to proceed to go on to matinee for animation, which is essentially uh, me animating objects inside of Unreal Engine in the matinee interface, and I'm going to be firing that off with Kismet. So this animation part is going to be object animation, so I'm essentially going to be opening the door as I said previously. And then the last two topics are particle system usage, which is essentially taking use of pre-made cascade particle systems, for example, uh, you know, crazy effects such as explosions, fire, steam, and all that. I'm going to show you how to pull that out from the uh, content browser and then put it into the scene. And I'm also going to show you how to hook that up into matinee. And lastly, I'm going to show you the Unreal Engine uh, front end, which will essentially allow you to distribute your game and send off and install it to someone else or try it out firsthand inside of its own standalone client. So that's pretty much everything I'm going to go over in the video. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the very first uh, uh, video, official video for the series. So I will see you next time. Goodbye.